Welcome back. For the first time ever, Americans now hold more than $1 trillion in credit card debt. Data from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York shows credit card balances grew by $45 billion in the second quarter of this year. And experts say many households are using credit cards as an extension of their income. Joining us now with some tips for consumers is Michael Mazarant, a financial instructor, instructor with the Retirement Education Foundation. Thank you so much for being here today. Of course. Thanks for having me. So what are the factors here behind this massive credit card debt? Sure. So there's two things, really. Number one is the common story. It's inflation. Now, inflation was really high in 2021 and 2022, and it's finally cooling off here in 2023. But cooling inflation does not mean lower prices. It just means prices are, are growing slower. So prices are still high. So as people are buying a new car, going to the grocery store, prices are still high. That's a challenge, number one. And number two, it's spending practices. So during the COVID lockdowns, we were all pent up. We had stimulus money. We had a lot of extra money saved in checking and savings. And once we were free to travel again, people were traveling like crazy. And we still are. We've spent through a lot of that built up checking and savings. And now people still want to keep spending, keep taking vacations, keep buying new things. And they're turning to credit instead of the cash they had built up. How about interest rates going up? Is there a ripple effect that's leading to people spending more on their credit cards? There certainly is. So the Fed's been raising rates to try to cool the economy off a little bit, slow inflation down. But those raising rates also make it more expensive to borrow. So if someone's missing a payment, if they're only paying the minimums, it's making it even more expensive and compounding that debt. So let's break this down for somebody at home that's watching that mm -hmm. is all of a sudden in credit card debt and they're in a tough position. What is your advice to that person if they're dealing with something like this? So number one, you've got to try to get the spending under control. Try to get an idea of what is my budget? What do I have coming in? What's going out? And where can I cut? And number two is to start hacking away at that debt as aggressively as you can. And are there any things you would say to avoid? People get hit with all kinds of offers, credit consolidation, you know, balance transfer offers. What would you say is a good idea and what's not so great? And I know, so a lot of people, they try to say, well, you know, if I put this balance on, a, on an interest-free card for 12 months, I can chip away at it. That's not a bad idea as long as you chip away at it. Mm -hmm. Because if you fail to chip away at that balance, you owe you owe the interest on the whole 12 months that you missed payments for. When you look at those credit cards, I mean, the 22%, 24% interest charges, even if you're making the minimum payment, to just get it down is almost impossible if you're making minimum payments. It really is. So even a minor balance, if we're only making minimum payments, it's going to take a long time to get that paid off. You've really got to try to get that paid off as quickly as possible. Any other tips for anyone who's maybe thinking about taking out a new credit card or, or is just dealing with a big balance? So just really make sure if you're taking out a new credit card, dealing with a big balance, do we really need this spending? If we don't, let's try to put it off. Let's try to pay off the current debt first. To play devil's advocate, let's say someone's in a position where they cannot pay it off. They financially cannot afford it and they're using it as an extension of their income as we discussed. What happens to their credit? What happens to a person that cannot afford to pay that credit card bill? So over time, the longer it, the longer it lingers out there, the lower the credit's going to start to shrink. And now, our, now we have credit score issues. It's a whole other host of issues we've got to deal with, which is why it's so important to have an emergency, emergency fund built up first to avoid these credit slips. Because once you start slipping down that credit slope, it's hard to build your way back up. On the brighter side of things, to you know, keep it a little positive, let's say you do start tackling this. You're getting everything under control. Maybe your credit score was tanked a little bit when you built up that balance. About how long would it take when you're exercising better judgment with the credit cards to build that back up? For sure. So you can, you'll see improvements in the first couple of months, and then over the next year or two or three, you'll see, you'll see it really start to build up to back where you were previously. What does this mean for the entire economy that we're in a debt like we're in with credit cards right now? So really it's interesting because as the debt number is growing, you also got to keep in mind that ways, uh, wages are rising. And so people are able to keep paying off these debts. They're able to keep paying the credit card bills. Now, if we start to see a shake in the employment market, the labor market, it could get really sticky really quickly. All right. Well, Michael Mazarin, thank you so much for being here with us. Hopefully your tips are going to make a big difference for some people. Hopefully. Appreciate your time.